Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you have heard my colleague, the Russian ambassador, explaining to you the process of the negotiations that took place and which resulted in the adoption today by the Council of its resolution on the Syrian crisis. I fully adhere to what the Russian ambassador said, and I would like to add some additional remarks. Number one, the Syrian government is of the opinion that the ball now is in the camp of those who are supporting the armed groups in Syria. These governments and parties should get involved in respecting the letter and the spirit of the six-point plan of Mr. Kofi Annan. Number two, double standards and double language will not be sufficient to prove the credibility of those who are manipulating the armed groups, supporting them, hosting them, training them, and pushing them towards committing further violence in Syria. Fifty violations took place in 24 hours only since yesterday. Many assassinations and many sabotage operations against public and private facilities. Number three. It has been very indicative in the statements of some members in the Council, very indicative and very alarming, actually, when we heard from these members of the Council a totally unpleasant language, provocative language, irresponsible language while talking about the Syrian government. I'm saying this because it was really astonishing to hear ambassadors entrusted with maintaining peace and security, entrusted with the fulfillment and implementation of this very, of this very important plan of six points of Mr. Kofi Annan, using the term of regime while talking about the Syrian government. This is a bad sign. This is a bad sign. I think this, is, uh, this explains the real bad intentions of their countries. And under such circumstances, these same states and countries and governments should assume the consequences of their acts towards uh, putting an end to the violence, cessation of violence in Syria, as well as towards fully implementing the provisions of uh, the plan. Number four, Syria celebrates its national day on April the 17th of every year, as I indicated to my uh, French colleague in my statement. It's really unfortunate and bizarre and weird and unacceptable that Paris will host a meeting on the same day, April the 17th, to strengthen the sanctions imposed against Syria and decided in the so-called meeting of Friends of Syria in Istanbul. We need responsible governments to deal with us. This is a very serious matter. We need good intentions. We need to see deeds, not only words, from the capitals involved in solidifying the Syrian crisis rather than extinguishing the fire. Number five, those who claimed in their statements that they were in favor of the quick implementation of the plan are the same ones 
who are still providing Israel with the nuclear submarines capable of launching nuclear warheads are the same who are protecting the Israeli campaign of settlement in the occupied Arab occupied territories, including the Golan, the Syrian Golan, Jerusalem. The same powers who claim being defensor of the Syrian people's freedom are helping Israel to run away from its obligations for peace, for achieving genuine just peace based on the United Nations resolutions 242338 and 497 plus the provisions of the Arab Peace Initiative. So here we have a kind of, we are dealing with a kind of hypocrisy and as far as my government is concerned and although the resolution does not satisfy us fully, we inform Mr. Anan that we will be on board provided that the other parties would respect also the provisions of the six points plan. <clears throat> and actually we are right now calling on Mr. Kofi Annan to return General Maud back to Damascus to finalize the negotiations on the protocol that will regulate the mission of the, the, mission of the early advanced team of the observers. I'm in your hands. أعلم أنه لديكم بعض التحفظات عليه لكنكم قبلتموه فما هي أهم التحفظات التي لديكم على هذا القرار التقييم النهائي سيترك للعاصمة دمشق وهي التي ستدلي بالتقييم النهائي حول هذا الموضوع لكن ما هو تقييمكم حاليا أنا قلت في بياني أمام مجلس الأمن أن حكومتي بالرغم من أنه لديها ملاحظات حول القرار ولكنها ستتعامل مع كوفي عنان لتطبيقه ونتوقع من الأطراف الأخرى بما في ذلك الحكومات التي تمول وتدرب وتسلح وتحمي وتهيج المجموعات المسلحة أن تفعل الشيء نفسه About general mood I'm sure you heard what, what uh, Ambassador Churkin said he seemed to think that a Rus uh, he said that a Russian diplomat had gone to Kofi Annan's office in Geneva and been told that Mr. Mood's uh, or General Mood return should not be anticipated. What, what's behind this? What, it seems like he left in a hurry, uh, and it ended up with Ambassador Turkin saying, you know, there are other people that could go. But I, I'd like to know your, the Syrian government's view of, what, of, of why he left and, and, and what this uh, seemingly strange uh, standoff is about. I, I trust what Ambassador Turkin said. I, I, I wasn't there. Uh, however, I, I trust what Ambassador Turkin said, and I think that as far as we are concerned, my government called on Mr. Kofi Annan to, uh, to bring back General Mood to Damascus with his techni technical team to continue the negotiations with the, the, their Syrian counterparts in order to finalize the negotiations on the uh, provisions of the protocol. Uh, what happened is that the team was in Damascus, actually. Then our minister had to leave to, for Moscow on an official visit. And uh, uh, in between, uh, General Mood left the, the capital with his uh, team. So the, our minister came back this, the, the day after from Moscow to see that the team is not in Damascus. So we were not able, able to continue our negotiations with the, with the team. And this is exactly, this explains what Ambassador Churkin uh, uh, w was saying. So, the Syrian government is waiting for, to see General Mood and the, tec the technical team to be back in Damascus, to re-engage in the negotiations in order to finalize the provisions of the protocol. Yes. Two men who were arrested for murdering uh, one of your religious the son, leaders. The son of the Mufti, yes. Had been paid $800 for each every one, crime. Yes, each one, yes, for each crime. And who had paid the $800? The money usually comes from outside, from some uh, circles, Salafi and Wahhabi circles outside of Syria. And Syria actually uh, needs uh, support 
needs cooperation, genuine support, genuine cooperation in order to implement this uh, plan. Uh, the Syrian people do not need $12 million from Mr. Obama to buy uh, some communication stuff and, and uh, uh, anti ballots uh, 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 gilets. The Syrian people need to lift these uh, sanctions uh, on, 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 on Syria, imposed on Syria, Syria illegally, unilaterally, uh, uh, and because these sanctions are the real problem, real problem. They are costing Syria billions of dollars. And the funny part of the story is that the European Union imposed sanctions on the Minister of Electricity in Syria because he is doing his job very well. This is why they are imposing on him.